Hello, my name is David Element. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Having recently posted my 1000th film, I thought that this might be an appropriate time to provide some more information about my channel and to say something about them. I'm a wildlife photographer who also makes wildlife films, so wildlife photography is my principal interest. This means that in many cases I will have prioritised taking still photographs before filming a subject. Sometimes I add still images to the beginning of a video, either because they may be of interest or because they make a useful contribution if I only have a limited amount of video material. I have three social media outlets, all illustrating still photographs and or films of British and European wildlife subjects. These are my website, David Elements Wildlife Web Pages, this YouTube channel, where I post films of wildlife and other subjects that interest me, including heritage transport, and I have also included some of my original improvised guitar compositions with slideshows if I have photographs of the appropriate subjects available. One of these, entitled Palmate, has been used to introduce this video. In addition, I post recently taken photographs and short film clips on Twitter. The links have all been provided on this page. I also privately publish print-on-demand books illustrating subjects that otherwise might be too new for most of public. These may be viewed in full online by using the link provided and they are only up to date today. My photographs have been supplied to photographic agencies including Avalon and Age Photostop, see links. The same photographs may also be distributed to other agencies via these supplies. My films are marketed by Newsflare. I am also able to provide photographs and films privately to bona fide users. The films that you may have been watching, or are about to watch, have all been provided for free and a random selection of excerpts have been used to illustrate this introductory film. However, all of my property, copyrighted, and any other usage that has not been sanctioned by me will be in breach of international copyright, i.e. the material will have been used illegally. If anyone wishes to use my films, they will need to contact me personally by email and be prepared to pay for the material that they use. Although I display my films for free, they all require equipment, expert knowledge about the subjects being portrayed, often research to confirm the identities of some of the more difficult species, and travel. They need to be edited, and all of these require expenditure and a considerable amount of time. As for equipment, I carry a digital video camera that is small enough to fit inside a coat pocket and that can also conveniently be strapped to the back of my hand when I'm using a still camera. The technological advances that have been made since I started making wildlife videos have been considerable. The oldest films on this channel would have been taken with a camera with a much lower resolution than the current ones and digital magnification would have simply exposed the inadequacies of the equipment when using telephoto settings. Digital still photography really became viable in about 2005, once the resolution obtained by camera sensors became superior to that of the transparency film that it then replaced. Liberating photographers have the constraints of being able to take a maximum of 37 transparencies on each reel, and then needing to wait until the film can develop before knowing if it is actually successful. Currently, sufficient memory is available in each of the larger capacity memory cards to be able to take thousands of images at a much higher resolution. Likewise, digital video cameras have been improved in quality, meaning that they too have a much higher resolution, higher capacity memory, smaller size and better quality lenses than would formerly have been the case. At the time of recording, I have been using a Panasonic HCV800 camera, not the latest model at the time that I bought it, but a decent upgrade over an earlier, lower resolution equivalent, but with a much better sensor. 
These small pocket sized cameras unfortunately lack a viewfinder, unlike the previous model, so there are limitations associated with using a small preview screen that sometimes prevent a potential subject from being seen or followed, particularly when shot in bright sunlight, or when trying to follow birds in flight. Normally I would use automatic focusing and automatic metering, but there are some situations where manual focusing or exposure compensation adjustments will be necessary, and auto-focusing has difficulty with clouds, flapping wings and certain colours. It may also focus on an area of an image other than the subject. However, these cameras excel in poor light. One of the key issues when wildlife films are displayed, particularly on television, is that they will often have been edited in a way that concentrates natural behaviour in a manner that normally wouldn't be seen, condensed to create a narrative. In reality, most wild animals do very little for a lot of the time, sleeping being a good example. Very often, a television film will contain behaviour that has been filmed over a protracted period, but obviously the purpose of these programmes is to enthrall and entertain the viewer, retaining their attention and showing aspects of behaviour that would often never be seen otherwise. Sometimes a story is being conveyed that might require several different individuals to be filmed under the pretense that all of the action being seen was both sequential and being performed by the subject of the film. For my videos, the narrative is being provided by the animals themselves. There is no commentary, nor intrusive music, and the soundtracks have not been edited to excise inconvenient background noises. It is a standing personal joke that as soon as the record button has been pressed, a siren will start to sound or a noisy helicopter will fly overhead. If the subject is doing something interesting that is unlikely to be recorded otherwise, it would be foolish to stop filming and miss the opportunity. I don't use a tripod, as it would be impractical to carry one. I will normally be heavily laden with still photography equipment, and it would simply be an encumbrance. Some wildlife subjects would also perceive one as a threat. Another good reason for not using one is because so much action would be missed while setting up the equipment. Modern sensors will enable excellent quality images to be obtained using handheld equipment, even in low light. Some subjects will perform well in front of the camera and others won't do much of any interest, for example a separate knock. However, obtaining footage of shy subjects, particularly mammals or birds, may require a lengthy period of familiarisation, the intention being to create a situation in which the subject will behave entirely naturally, in much the same manner as would have been the case if the photographer had not been present. Any wild animal that feels threatened will, in all likelihood, simply run or fly away, and rightly so. I don't own a hide and I only use one rarely, and then only when one has been provided by a wildlife reserve. It has always been something of a mystery as to why so many films have been watched by so many viewers and how these films have worked. Some of the better films have been done for us to look. So I would urge viewers to make good use of the playlist provided as these have been arranged according to their subject matter, and they enable rapid perusal for those with an interest in specific areas of wildlife. There are separate searches provided for transport subjects and for original music. Please enjoy your visit, and constructive feedback is always welcome. Thank you. Thank you.